Good morning. It is a beautiful day out today. Often we say that, but it really is gorgeous out today. Fear as an artifact of illusion. So we as, as individuals and as a species have a lot of fear. Because we have a lot of fear, we see that many times reflected out in the world. We see and hear about events that have been, you know, terrible, painful, destructive. We hear about division and conflict. And many times when we do, we feel so small. We feel helpless. We feel like, what can I possibly do? These events are so big. The world is so broken. You know, what can I possibly do? It is very important that we do not feel powerless. We are very powerful, multidimensional beings, and we are connected to one another. And so the way that we meet reality and the way that we meet our own fear is actually very powerful. It is the living place of work, we could say. When we work on ourselves and meet the world and our own lives with love and compassion and peace rather than with hopelessness or despair or struggle, we are a part of the solution, even if we can't see it immediately. So meanwhile, we have a lot of fear. So we see a lot of examples of that in the world. But fear can only occur as we buy into a perception that is not in alignment with the truth of who we really are. When I say who we really are, I mean as spirit, as spiritual beings, as consciousness itself. We've come to engage this human experience, and we've really done a good job of getting really deep, <laughs> really deep into it. The physical is super consistent, super persistent, super convincing. We are really doing this. I mean, this is a real experience of separation, it seems. And in that experience of separation, things prompt feelings in us. They, they prompt perceptions. So we say it made us feel, something made us feel some way. Well, technically, it's never really making us feel that way. We may not be aware, but we have the power to apply the meaning to all things, always. But meanwhile, that being said, often it's some event or some circumstance or some idea or some belief that makes us believe some perception that is not in alignment with the truth of who we really are. For example, Something might occur that makes us feel, I am powerless. The truth is, you are a powerful being. Spirit is truly powerful, ultimately powerful. But the illusion of the deep sense of separation here that we're experiencing prompts sometimes an incredible sense of powerlessness. And then we feel afraid. Because now I'm feeling something that is not in alignment with what I really am. Or something makes us believe, I am not free. We are free. We are so free that we can agree to commit ourselves into an experience like this where we experience not freedom for a while, as deep as we can. But our true nature remains what it is. We are always free, always. Or something might make us believe I am unworthy of love. My goodness, that's a big one too. So many of us feel shame feel like we are not worthy of receiving love unless we do something, unless we be something, fulfill some role, perform some action, be somebody in the world that I was taught I have to be to be this important person. You don't have to be anybody. You don't have to do anything. You are valuable and worthy just for being, just who you are. Source loves you. God loves you right now for exactly who you are. You are worthy of love. That is true no matter what happens in our lives. You are worthy of love. Okay, so these forms in our lives, these events, these circumstances, ideas, thoughts, beliefs, whatever they are that's triggering us to make us perceive these perceptions, they're not fundamentally real. So I know it's a real experience, right? We're really having an experience here today. <laughs> I can see you. You can see me. We have, we're feeling the air. We can see the light, we can hear each other. It's a rich context. But all form, all distinction, all sensory data, even all thoughts, 
are not fundamental. What I mean is they're not the bedrock of what truly is. They will pass. And there are states of being in which we can look back, so to speak, and say and see, oh, I wasn't the body. <laughs> I wasn't the name. I wasn't the profession. I wasn't what this person called me on a Wednesday at 2.38 in the afternoon, whatever, <laughs> you know. The forms are like tools and toys of creation, but they're not fundamental. They are, in a sense, an illusion. Okay, so it's a real experience, and I say an illusion, I, I don't mean that lightly, because this is, we're going all the way here. This is as deep as, <laughs> taking as deep as we can. But those illusions that seem to prompt us to feel fear are not fundamental. And at their root, they are made of the same stuff of life that is love and joy and peace and freedom. Okay, so I'll use two analogies to try to describe this. I'm going to borrow the first one from the physicist Tom Campbell. I love this analogy. I mean, it's super crude and simple, so please forgive the simplicity of it. So imagine that that which is, consciousness itself, is like a bed sheet. So it's it's just a bed sheet. And, but you can stick your hand up through the bed sheet and make a finger puppet out of the bed sheet and make another one and make another one. And soon you have all these forms that have risen up and they're talking to each other and they're making shapes. Well, it doesn't really matter how many times you twist or bend or move the bed sheet. It's still the sheet. And in a similar way, the substance of what we're experiencing here on earth, all the form, is made of the stuff of life. Consciousness itself, spirit itself, it's made of, ultimately, love and joy and freedom. Another analogy, simple analogy, imagine the ocean. The ocean is full of water. It's all water. Everything is water. There might be currents that arise in the water. There might be temperature differences. There might be salinity differences. There might be you know, changes and movements and action occurring, but it's still water. You could say metaphorically when we talk about meditation, meditation is like the fish becoming aware that it's always been in water. <laughs> it becomes aware of the substance that was always there and never left. And that is the nature of what we really are is spirit. The true substance of spirit never goes anywhere. It's always now, always here. We're always a part of it. It is the living aliveness of our very being itself that cannot be described. It transcends all description, all characteristics, and yet we can say it is made of love and peace and joy. Okay, so... That is, while that may be the truth, we lose ourselves in the bedsheet forms. We lose ourselves in the currents of the ocean and the temperatures. The forms that have arisen on earth, we are looking square at them, and pretty soon we lose ourselves in the form, and we believe we are the form. That is the nature of the veil, in fact, that we agree to adopt when we come to be human, it is simply an, uh, an enabling of obscuring so that the form becomes so convincing, so deep, so engaging, that we lose ourselves in it. So that you can actually be a human. <laughs> be you. Be this person and this story and to have these, these valuable, rich perspectives that you are having. We suffer, though, when we lose ourselves in the form. When we lose ourselves in the story. I'm just this certain whatever thing, name, whatever, whatever description makes you feel limited or alone or fearful. I'm just that. No, <laughs> you're not just that. But that is what earth permits. In fact, so while this illusion on earth can be like super convincing, very persistent, very consistent, it is very value add actually in that consistency and persistence because the persistent, the persistence, persistency of the form is the opportunity because it gives us a chance, even an unrelenting chance to meet the portions of ourselves that are not yet integrated, to meet and overcome fear that has not yet been processed, to integrate experience, to make choices under 
contexts that might be very difficult to discover who we really are in that maximum rigor. It's an opportunity. So in other words, we use the rigor. As spiritual beings, we utilize this rich, rich physical opportunity that has been given to us. We utilize it to make choices and this to wield intention to see if we can make choices that are in alignment with the love of who we really are rather than fear. We have the opportunity to integrate experience that is really experience something and then come to terms with it and understand what it means, understand what it means to be alone or any, any type of experience on earth to really integrate what it means to have that experience. We have the opportunity to be more by being something specific, being a specific person, doing a specific job, performing a specific role. We have the opportunity then to, through all that, refine and grow the quality of what we are and add to it. You could say that we are engaging the world of form and refining the quality of what we actually are through that engagement. Or you could say we refine ourselves against the rigor, perhaps like, okay, these are crude metaphors, and I don't mean this like dualistically, but like a rock shaped by a chisel or like gold that has been purified by fire. It is only through that adverse condition that we can grow. Well, I, I don't want to say only through, actually. I, I'm not going to use the word only, but the contrast of it is an offering. It's like if you lay down on a weight bench and push a heavy weight over your body, you're using the, the pressure of the weight so that you can grow stronger. The circumstances of life are like that. So all of this is an opportunity. It's a gift. The question is, how do you use it now? What are you going to choose to do today or be today? Can you actually allow the love and the peace and the joy of your true nature today, wherever you are, in whatever small way. It's not about the size. It's about the quality. It's about how you meet and use this moment, exactly this given moment. That is the name of the game. As we do that, it is then important to remember that our true nature, because we're going to get lost again and again, and the... <laughs> and the thickness and the denseness of the illusion. To remember that our true nature, our, the substance of life itself, cannot ultimately be harmed and cannot fail. It is always of love and freedom and joy. Nothing can truly harm consciousness itself, you could say. If you project a movie onto a movie screen, it doesn't actually matter what images you throw onto the movie screen, you can't hurt the screen. Now, I know that that's difficult to perceive because we feel a lot of pain here sometimes. Our very phys phys physiological forms can deteriorate. They do deteriorate. <laughs> it's the nature of aging. We all experience it. But consciousness itself, who you truly are, the aliveness that you are, cannot truly be harmed. <clears throat> and importantly, nothing that that consciousness loves can truly be lost. The forms will change and pass away. Every one of us in this room is going to die. It's okay. Our bodies will eventually fail. Every bench in this room will eventually crumble. It's okay. Because what we are is life itself. There is nothing that can thwart that, nothing that can kill it. It doesn't, it, it has no enemy. It has no adversity to it. It's, it's what is, it's the substance of, of power and life itself. And so when we love something, Love is a reflection of a unity of being that we naturally know. So the form may fall away, but the love remains. Like if you love someone and then they pass, we all experience loss here. It's amazing how powerful and painful it can be, the grief. All that we can lose is the temporary form. We cannot lose the relationship, the love. In fact, we can re-experience it later if we so choose. We are connected to each other. We are one in the great ocean of source. And our loving relationships remain and can even thrive and grow. 
In fact, we know many more. We're close to many more than we commonly remember while we're playing this game on earth, being human. Love endures and remains always. It cannot be thwarted, even if we take off a shirt. Even if a shirt gets holes in it, it's not a big deal. And so even our perception of loss, we have a lot of fear about that. We don't need to fear. What you value, all that is knows, and values too, because you are a part of it, and it cannot truly be lost. But where else can you have the engaging experience of experiencing loss, seeing what you do with it? In conclusion, there is nothing ever to fear. I know that's not always easy to see. This world can at times seem very unrelenting and merciless. But no matter how the forms on the stage arise, no matter what the play, how it unfolds, the substance of being remains alive, vibrant, full of love and life. And we will always be that. And because of that and in that, there is nothing to be afraid of. Let me say a brief prayer. God of being, thank you so much for this day to experience the forms of earth, to experience our great and beautiful limitations and enablements. We thank you for the sun and the birds of spring. We thank you for our time together, and we thank you most for the presence of your great spirit of life that remains with us and shines through us. Please help us to sense that, to know the true substance of being that cannot be harmed, that we might live lives on earth that are full of love and joy and free from fear. Amen.